chapter. Uh, we're talking about names and formulas. So how we chemically will name uh, compounds, how we're going to write their formulas, and then get into the second part of the chapter, which is some calculations. Some of the stuff you've already had if you've been in earth science, uh, maybe a little bit in biology, but it's, you know, for some, it's going to be new. For some of you, this won't be too bad. All right, so the term again, nomenclature. What we've got to do, the first part, is remember the most common charges that occur for elements. Okay, this will be the first portion. So knowing things like sodium's a plus one, calcium's a plus two, oxygen's a minus two, fluorine, and so on and so forth. If you can't remember those, then you're going to have trouble doing the next step. We've talked about it. Everything kind of adds another layer to what we've already learned. All right, there's three main types of chemicals that we're going to learn to name. And we're going to kind of today focus on the first main type, maybe get into a little bit of the second type, and then, you know, finish up the acids probably the next day. So binary compounds. So again, binary. Two elements only. So you see the formula there, AX, BY. That's all we're going to concern ourselves about first. Any format like that is only going to be named a certain way. Now, very simple. For binary, it gets an IDE ending for the second element. That's it. We name the first element, second element gets the ending IDE. So the two types of binary compounds we're going to look at, ionic compounds that have only two elements and covalent compounds that have only two elements. And again, we should know by now what, what makes an ionic bond and what makes a covalent compound. The second main type that we'll look at are ionic with polyatomic. So we're going to have a metal now with not just one nonmetal, but several nonmetals. So you can see formulas there like K2SO4, NaClO3, and so on. The third chemical that we will name uh, by the end of the chapter are acids. Things like hydrochloric and sulfuric, how we get those names. And again, we'll kind of talk about that as we go. All right. So again, we're going to focus on just the binary compounds uh, first. All right. So binary ionic. Again, we know it's a one metal, one nonmetal, AXBY. So very simple. We're going to go from formula to name. So every process is going to have the same steps. The chemical formula, write its name. Two-step process. The metal, which is the positive ion. We just name it as is. Don't change a thing. Name what you see. Number two, the nonmetal, okay? The thing that's the negative ion. Remember, nonmetals gain electrons, so negative. It gets the ending IDE. Now it's very important of you know to remember this. Ide means alone. So if a chemical ends in something ide, you know it's just that thing. We're also going to learn things like eight and it. Okay, A-T-E and I-T-E, those are not alone. Okay, it's important to know the difference. So, four very simple uh, chemicals here that just by knowing those two rules, we should be able to name those four. Name the metal as is. Name the nonmetal gets the ending I-D-E. Don't do anything else. So, we have K-C-L. We have N-A-2-S, M-G-F-2, and Li2O. So what I want you to do is take about a minute here and figure out if you can um, know what those are, write down their names, and we'll look at them here in a second. All right, so that's a few seconds there. Again, shouldn't take you a lot of time because of what we're doing. So potassium and chlorine, potassium chloride, sodium and sulfur, Sodium sulfide. Okay, again, it's important ide. And then the last two, magnesium fluoride and lithium oxide. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, what about like the Na2 or the F2? Do we have to name the numbers? You know, do we have to somehow say di or two or something like that? No, not for these. Just name the metal, name the nonmetal, you're done with it. Okay. If there's questions, you have to ask me tomorrow. All right. Now, where you do have to sort of give a little bit more information, 
are some of the transition metals or the D block. All right, so again, most metals have only one common charge, and that's the ones we've been focusing on, sodium plus one, potassium plus one, and so on. Now, transition metals can have more than one common ion. Remember, transition metals are the D block metals. All right, so first of all, most transition metals are a plus two right off the bat. So a D block metal, plus two. Should not be, you know, anything that you got to worry about there. Okay. Now, if it has multiple charges, what are the multiple charges? Okay. Well, it's based upon electron configurations. And again, I'll show an example probably a little bit later. Remember, we talked about some D-block metals can change their electron configuration. S2D9s become S1D10s and all that stuff. Well, here are the multiple ones that you have to worry about, and we'll talk about a chart that you can write these down here in a second. The multiple ones that you have to pay attention to okay, are these elements that I have listed. First two, iron and chromium. Because of their electron configuration, they can lose two, lose three, or lose six electrons. Those are the three most common. Um, if you can see the big charts in the front of the room, uh, they have those numbers too. Sometimes they refer to them as oxidation states. Manganese and cobalt, plus two and plus three. Okay. Tin and lead, a two and a four. Copper, a one and a two. Mercury's kind of weird. It's got this weird HG2. We'll talk about that in more detail as we get to it. And then silver doesn't have a multiple, but I show silver because its only charge is a plus one. Now, that means any other D-block metal that I have not shown here in the multiples, you assume it's a plus two. Gold, plus two. Don't worry about anything else. Silver, uh, plus one. It's on the table. It's on that chart. Platinum, don't know. Plus two then. Okay, so it only, everything's a plus two except for these. Now, are there more exceptions than the multiples I have listed? Yes. But these are the only ones that you have to worry about. Iron, chromium, manganese, cobalt, tin and lead, copper, mercury, the two different types of mercury, and silver. And again, I'm going to show you a different chart here in a little bit that will help you kind of remember those. Um, there's lots of things to this chart, uh, and I'm just going to focus on one thing at a time. All right, hopefully I'm kind of going slow enough you guys can um, get everything written down. So what about, you know, if they have multiple charges, how do we do it differently? We don't. We, we still will put, all right, iron plus two, you know, iron plus three or iron plus six. Figure out the formulas the same way, okay, or figure out the names the same way. All right, now, what about how do we identify the ones that have different charges? So how do we do the, the iron, the copper, the cobalt, the, all the ones that have those multiple charges? We use what's called a stock system. Okay, and very simply, the stock system is a Roman numeral that helps us determine the charge. So if we see copper Roman numeral 1 sulfide, that just means it's copper that has a plus one charge. If we see copper Roman numeral two sulfide, that means it has a plus two charge. It does not mean, okay, the Roman numerals do not equal the number of atoms. Okay, so copper one is not Cu1. Copper 1 is actually Cu2s because copper plus 1, sulfide means sulfur alone, 2 minus. Okay. So we have, in this case here, copper plus 1, sulfur 2 minus, Cu2s. With the other one, copper 2. Okay, copper Roman numeral 2, Cu plus 2, and sulfide is sulfur minus 2. Okay. Now, again, it's that exact same thing. 
Copper can either be copper 1, so it could be like sodium. Copper can also be copper 2, which means it can be like calcium. So you see a Roman numeral. Again, it tells you the charge, not the number of atoms. Okay. Now, here's another chart that's on the website. Uh, let me show you the website chart there again as we're going to everything here. This ion chart, PDF file. When you open it up, there's two part, or there's actually three parts of the table. The only part I want you to worry about first is this top half, the monatomic ions. Okay, you can print this out, uh, so you can use it. What it has, it reminds you what, and again, I kind of the ones that are plus one charge are group ones. Copper can also be a one. Silver can be a one. What are the plus two charges? Okay, group two. Also, copper, the mercuries, iron and chromium, tin and lead, cobalt and manganese. What are the plus threes that you have to worry about? Aluminum, chromium and iron, cobalt and manganese. Plus fours. And again, let me, it's also probably a little small. So again, you can see group ones, what they are, group twos, group threes, fours and sixes. All right, down here at the bottom, you, I remind you what the minus ones are. There's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Hydrogen also could be a one, which we'll worry about later. There's your minus two, sulfur and oxygen. Here's your most common minus threes, nitrogen and phosphorus. Again, you see how the endings for the negatives are I'd. Okay? Nitride, phosphide, so on and so forth. All right, so again, you're going to be you know, downloading that chart from the chapter seven, all right, and that's something you can use to definitely uh, help you remember these. Okay, all right. So, quick practice here. You've got a name. We're gonna write. We're gonna change it to a formula. So, two very simple steps. Write down the symbols and the correct charges for everything that's involved, and then remember the charges have to cancel out. We cross charges to make the other subscript. You guys did this on the test. Okay, we did this on the on the quiz worksheet last week. This part should be very very easy. Okay, so what I want to do is give you a minute, a couple minutes here. Write these three down: magnesium and bromine. What would be the formula? Magnesium bromide, silver one chloride. Okay, and again, what does the Roman numeral tell us? And then the third one: iron Roman numeral three oxide. Okay, what does that give us? Okay, so I'll give you a couple of minutes here to pause and uh, figure these three out, and we'll keep moving. Okay, so going through these here. Magnesium bromide. So magnesium, 2 plus. Bromide means bromine, minus 1 charge. So plus 2 and a minus 1, the only way they're going to cancel out, MgBr2. Again, you don't have to show the 1 for magnesium. Silver one chloride. Again, silver means it's a, the Roman numeral tells us it's a plus one. Doesn't necessarily mean that there's only going to be one silver in the formula. Chloride is chlorine. Again, minus one or one minus. A plus one and a minus one, AgCl. Last one then, iron three oxide. Iron three. And here's one where the Roman numeral definitely does not give us the number of ions. Oxide, oxygen, 2 minus. Again, how do we know this? Ide means alone. Bromide, chloride, oxide. So a plus 3 and a minus 2, we know common denominator, common factor of a 6. Fe2O3. So again, you're given the name, you can write the formula. You just need to know what the charges are. And for most of the metals, there's only one charge. You got the periodic table, you're going to know it. There are some that have multiple charges, like iron. 
then you got to learn those. So I guess that's kind of the first thing you got to you really focus on learning and, and memorizing. Okay. Now, um, one other thing we talk about writing these or naming these. You know, we drop the ending and it becomes I D E. I'm not. You know, we're going to work on the spelling. You know, potassium chloride. You know, how am I going to know what letters to drop? You know, how am I going to know it's not chlorine eyed or sulfur eyed or oxygen eyed? We'll learn it. They kind of drop the last couple letters. Um, you know, it, I guess maybe a simple rule is the last letter you're going to keep is going to be a consonant and not a vowel. Although I, can, I don't know if I can say that's 100% accurate. You'll just you'll just kind of learn what they are as we go. So spelling, I'm not going to make a big deal except in certain cases. So you and again you will learn that as as we kind of go. All right. The next type that we're going to focus on, covalent compounds. Okay, so again, we're in a non-metal and a non-metal. And again, we're keeping it very simple. We're only looking at binary compounds, so two non-metals only. But again, we have that same format, AX, BY. Now, it's the exact same setup as we did with ionic, with one additional thing. And that's this very first step. We do use prefixes to tell us the number of atoms. So CO2. We've got to talk about the O, O2, what that how that affects the name. Now, for this. Okay, so to know these prefixes on page 228. Okay, there's a chart that has a prefix, and you're going to see the prefixes mono, di, tri, tetra. A lot of those prefixes you already know because they correspond to certain numbers. So very simple. We got to use prefixes to, based upon what our values of x and y are. Okay. Now, the rest of the naming is just like we did with the ionic. Okay. We name the first nonmetal with a prefix. Now, we do drop if the first one's a single atom. We, you know, we just don't use the word mono, okay, if it's on the first element only. And then we name the second metal, non-metal, sorry, second non-metal, with a prefix and the i ending. So you name the first non-metal with a prefix. You name the second non-metal with a prefix and the i ending. And we just learned how to name a whole nother, you know, group of chemicals. So binary, binary ionic, now binary covalent. So here are four simple examples. And again, we already know the names of a lot of these. CO2. We've been calling it, you've been calling it carbon dioxide for who knows how long. All right? Let's break it apart. One carbon, two oxygens. Again, that rule of we drop mono. Okay? We drop mono only if it's the first element. So CO2, one carbon, two oxygens. Mono carbon dioxide. We call carbon dioxide. Next one, CO, carbon and oxygen, carbon monoxide. All right. So again, you name the first nonmetal, give it its corresponding prefix. Name the second nonmetal, give it its corresponding prefix. Give it then the ending IDE, and you're done. Right. Again, these are very simple ones that we can name. Uh, it really doesn't take a whole lot to do these. Okay, this is this should be, you know, pretty uh, fairly easy section to kind of work through. And again, you know, hopefully, you know, questions you have, you're kind of writing things down and you're um, keeping track of stuff. So when we come in tomorrow, um, you know, you can kind of ask those questions. And we kind of keep moving forward with this. All right, take a little break here from as far as the presentation. Four on the left, four on the right. You're going to name the four, or you're going to write the formulas for the four. So on the left, you have four ionic chemicals. They're, they're, everything's binary. So on the left, they're ionic. In fact, it's ionic. should tell you how to name or write. So for the first two, name what you see. 
All right? Given a formula, write its name. The second two, given a formula or given a name, write the formula. Covalent binary. You have two covalent compounds, write their form, write their name. Two names, write their formulas. Okay? So, again, very similar setup in terms of the type of questions. You've just got to apply the right rules to the naming. And again, ionic and covalent, you name exactly the same way, except covalent's got one extra piece to it that you have to factor in. All right, so I'll give you a couple minutes here to kind of work on this and figure out some of these. 